Hey guys, I am Digital Illustrator Mike Meth, and this is going to be Q&A Part 3. Uh, Luke Cornwall on Twitter asked, what is my method for blending? So, this is, uh, blending is really probably one of the most important, if not the most important part of digital painting, or any type of realistic digital painting. Um, so... I want to talk about some of the different techniques you can use to blend. Um, why don't we just get into it? So I've got my canvas here. Uh, like I said, I like to use this number 17 chalk brush, but you know, for the sake of this, I can just use the hard round with pressure opacity. Um, I guess I should talk about this first. So you've got all these brushes, uh, these preset brushes that come with Photoshop. Um, You've got your hard round, your soft round, uh, hard round pressure size, uh, soft round pressure size. So what this means, just the regular hard round by itself is not really all that pressure sensitive. I guess it is a little bit. Um, doesn't lend itself as well as this one, the hard round pressure opacity and what that does using the Wacom tablet the harder you press the more opaque the the paint becomes um, and you can see you know this one comes with this thing checked off this is your uh, pressure sensitivity for opacity control when I turn that off this is what happens when I turn it on this is what happens uh, in addition to that this little slider over here, if you turn this down, even if I have that pressure sensitivity uh, on, it will cap at 43% or whatever I set it here. Uh, another thing you can use is flow. And what flow does, uh, the lower you have your flow, the more time you have to spend for the uh, the pigment to kick in, it's kind of like an airbrush, right? Um, so this is a really good one for blending just because it's naturally kind of airbrushing. Um, so if I do that over here, that red, and I do this yellow over here, one, I can straight on put the yellow on here. Another thing that's really important for blending is using the color picker, um, which is over, where is that? Here, the eyedropper tool. When you click anywhere on the canvas, it selects that color. And you see this little radio, or radial menu. Uh, the color on the bottom is the color I have selected already. The one on top is the new color I'm about to select. So if I select this gray and go back to my brush tool, now that's what I'm blending and coloring with. Um, also, if I... You don't have to select that tool over here all the time. Hotkeys are super, super important and helpful. If you know hotkeys, it saves you a lot of time. So, for example, for the, uh, the color picker, if you hold down the Alt key or the Option key on Mac, that opens up your color picker. You click. When you let go, it takes you back to your brush tool. I don't really uh, use the flow jitter so much. Uh, I use the opacity uh, much more so. Uh, another really important thing that people don't typically talk about uh, is what to do with your, your tablet settings. So I'm going to, you can't see it's off screen here, but I'm opening up my control panel. Uh, I'm opening up my Wacom tablet properties. I'm bringing that over here, okay? Uh, and select my grip pen. Now over here, tip feel. Um, what that does, if I put this all the way over to soft, when I go to paint in here, even though I have my opacity, you know, my pressure sensitivity on, it's super, super sensitive. Meaning, uh, unless I press down like a feather, it's gonna go almost to maximum uh, opacity. Now if I take my settings again, if I push this all the way up to firm, 
what that does is when I go back to paint, I have to press really hard for it to get to maximum opacity. Um, so if you're looking for a really soft blended or a really soft, yeah, if you're looking to have really soft blending, that's a good setting. I typically have my tip feel set to here, two away from the firmest. Um, because I like to have, when I blend, I like to be able to see a little bit of that brushwork. You know, it gives it kind of a painterly feel. And I'm constantly, when I'm coloring or painting, I'm constantly using my color picker to, you know, to select from the canvas. Um, so that's really the, the fundamental of how, the fundamentals of how I do my my blending, you know, practical application. Uh, if I open up, let's see here. This guy. My computer decides to load. Uh oh. Ruh row. There we go. Okay. Um. So, like I said, I typically use this chalk seventeen brush. Um. I feel like, I mean, the hard round does the trick. I think most of my early digital paintings I used exclusively the hard round. I like this chalk one because if you see, it's it's a little more uh, irregular. It's a little more gestural. Um, also, depending on what I'm doing, I will change the uh, the maximum opacity. So if I'm doing, for example. Ah, stop it. My undo states are not working. <sighs> um, so if I'm doing like an initial construction sketch, I'll usually turn that maximum opacity down to like 20%. Um, just to kind of, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, whatever. Um, so it's kind of loose gestural. Uh, kind of sketchy and then when I'm going in for like finished line work I'll maybe turn it up to 50 or 60 or 70 or something like that oh another really helpful hotkey uh, instead of having to go into these menus and manually do the slider uh, the number keys if I press 7 takes me to 70 percent if I do 3 30 percent if I do 0 it takes me to 100 percent if I want to do like single digits, it would be bleh, single digits. I would do zero and then seven for seven percent, uh, and then maybe you know do some harder lines on top of that. Um, hope that answered the question. Yeah, so a lot of color picking. Um, you know, if I I have kind of like a finished project uh, product. Instead of having to go into my color picker and constantly pick new colors, uh, if I have the majority of the colors now in this scene that I need to use, I can use my color picker using the Alt or Option key, Alt or Option key, uh, sample that color, and use it elsewhere. Uh, maybe if I wanted to put a little more white, I don't know. Uh, in the lip region. You know, sample that color, go in, put it here, or, uh, you know, maybe over here. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's the gist of how I do my color blending. Um, so, the things to walk away with, uh, your, where is my tablet setting? Where are my tablet settings? Um, things to walk away with, how to use your Wacom tablet properties uh, to change the tip feel of your grip pen. Uh, the closer to firm, the, the softer the blending. The closer to soft, the harder you have to press. Um, showed you guys a little bit about uh, opacity control. Um, you know, if you have this little icon depressed, the harder you press, the more opaque, the softer, the less. Um, with your flow, this is your flow jitter. If you turn down your maximum flow, 
uh, the more you go over an area, the more pigment you get. It's more like an airbrush. Um, showed you guys some hotkeys, alt or option for your color picker. Um, the number keys to set your opacity. Uh, also, if, if you click this button for your flow, again, those number keys work for the flow instead of the opacity. If I press seven, gives your flow 70, three for 30, etc. cetera. Um, so that's, that's basically how I do my blending. Uh, yeah, keep the questions coming. I'm happy to do more of these videos. Thank you guys, see you next time.